Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the Cometer Orion GoldenEye Multi-Shot PCP kit on test. But before that, I'm heading out to the farm to try to bag a few birds while dodging the rainstorms. Right, we're out on the farm today. Now, it wasn't our original plan. The idea was that we were going to head to the woods and try and make a bit of a mixed autumn bag, but uh, it was absolutely chucking it down this morning, so that turned out to be a complete washout. Now, you wouldn't believe it now because the sun's actually started poking its head out, but we've come to the farm to find some shelter, which we will probably need because the forecast for the rest of the day is still pretty bad. Hopefully, there's going to be a few pests seeking out some shelter here as well. Now, we've had a quick look round. There certainly don't seem to be as many feral pigeons as there were before, and that's because of the last year or two, we've been hitting them very hard. But there are a few collared doves about, so hopefully we can have a bit of sport with them. Right, my gun choice for today is the BSA Ultra SE, and that's 177 caliber in legal limit, which I think is just about perfect when you're shooting around farm buildings. Now, this gun, I've had it for four or five years. It served me ever so well. Being so compact, when you're shooting around the confines of the farm, you're just far less likely to bash the muzzle, knock the gun about. Firstly, that's going to damage the gun, and secondly, it's likely to spook whatever you're trying to get an aim at. So the nice compact gun like this really lends itself very well to farmyard shooting. Now, I've not made many modifications to this gun, but one thing I have done is added the latest model of BSA's 10-shot magazine. Now, this particular one, the original one was metal, this one is more of a synthetic and the plastic it's made from actually has PTFE, which is a self-lubricating plastic. It makes for a very slick action and I'm convinced it's also much kinder on the pellets. And apart from being a very compact and reliable little air rifle, the Ultra SE is also proved to be extremely accurate. So let's see if we can put it to the test before the rain starts coming down again. Right, well here's the attraction that we have here. Now we've got the maize silage that's put out for the cattle and there are also a couple of very large silage clamps across the other side of the yard. They're attracting feral pigeons and collared doves which are not only eating this stuff but also their droppings are getting into it and that's a concern for the farmer. Uh, later on in the year when it gets a bit colder this will probably attract a few rats too. My only concern today is that there doesn't seem to be much about feeding on it yet. Well, that's a decent start. Now, this is a point I go on about a lot, but it's a point worth making. I did check before I took that shot that that feral pigeon was against one of the roof joists. Very fragile roof panels here. If I tear a hole in one with a pellet, I won't be allowed back again. So I just make sure that the birds are in front of those joists, it makes for a really solid backstop. Shots are safe, don't do any harm to the building. But I can't get in from this side, so I'm going to walk back round to the other side of this barn and we'll pick that one up.
Great, bit of a further one that time. Right, let's go and get them. Right, well I said the Ultra was an accurate little gun. Now it's a nice clean headshot, good clean kill. And it's something I do try to do when I'm using legal limit and shooting feral pigeons. They're quite hefty birds, so if I can, I do try to take them with headshots to get that nice swift dispatch. Right, let's go and get the other one. Right, well those two feral pigeons have gone onto the slurry pit. They're really not very clean living birds and therefore I don't regard them as being good for the table. However, collared doves can be very good to eat. We've noticed a few moving on the opposite side of the farm, so we'll head over to there now and see if we can't catch up with some of those. Right, well there were quite a few collared doves here, but typically we managed to spook the whole flock on our way across. They seem to be very flighty today and we didn't manage to get anywhere near within range, so what I've decided to do I've come into this empty cattle pen. It's very shady in here, and I'm hoping that that will just give me enough cover to maybe ambush one or two birds as they come back. There is quite a draw here. There are a few city trees that they tend to use as a bit of a lookout, and also some wires that stretch across here as well. Now they tend to use those as a bit of a vantage point before they drop down into the yard to feed. So hopefully once we settle in and keep quiet for a little while, we should get some action. Well, there's one from the city tree. Now, I'm usually quite a stickler for headshots, but not so much with collared doves because they are very slightly built birds. So, it tends to be, if you hit them in the heart and lung area, they will come down nice and cleanly. Particularly if they've got their back to you and you can plant that pellet right between their wings, as if you're striking them right between the shoulders. There's very little resistance there. You haven't got the breast meat or the breast bone pellet has a nice clear route through to the heart and lung area, they come down very cleanly. So although, like I say, usually I'm adamant about trying to take everything with headshots, with collared doves, you tend to be able to get away with hitting them in the heart and lung area when you're using legal limit air gun. Got it. Well, you can usually count on something like that happening. I set up in a spot where I thought I could pretty much cover everywhere where the birds were likely to pitch. And typically, that one found a spot on the telegraph pole where I just couldn't quite get on it. I saw it come in, so I crept on round to here. Didn't particularly want to have to kneel down in all this muck, but fortunately, the cattle haven't been here for a long time and it is dry. Anyway, it was worth creeping on round, and that's another dove in the bag. Well, I think I'm going to give it a few minutes here now. There are a few more birds moving, but the trouble is being right back in there, I can't really cover all of the areas where they're likely to pitch in. So the only advantage to being back there is it's much shadier, so I am better concealed. So although this is going to compromise my concealment a little bit, being at the lighter end of the barn, I think it's a compromise that is worth taking because it gives me a much wider arc of fire. 
Now we have heard a couple very loud claps of thunder, so I'm just hoping that the rain will hold off for long enough for us to maybe bag one or two more birds. Well, that one was at an angle that I certainly couldn't have covered from that first spot, so it was worth moving across here. Right, well, the rain is absolutely bucketing down now. I don't know whether you can hear it on the roof. In a funny sort of way, I'm a little bit relieved because it was turning out so nice earlier on that I did start to feel that we may have been better off going to the woods, but as it happens, it would have been a complete wash out there. Now, the problem we've got now is that with this rain coming down, the birds just aren't flighting. We're not getting any more shots. So I'm gonna pick up the doves that we have had and wrap it up there. Well, at least we managed to grab a few hours shooting between the downpours there. And now, it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. Thousands of airgun shooters of all ages descended on Western Park last weekend for the Midland Game Fair. Visitors were able to get their hands on some of the best hardware on the market and get a sneak preview of new gear that will be in the shops very soon. Air Arms unveiled their new S510 TDR, launched to meet popular demand for a takedown airgun with their acclaimed side lever action. The gun boasts a raft of features, including the high level of accuracy you'd expect from Air Arms, and even comes supplied with a lined hard case to keep it safe. It's something the public have wanted for a very, very long time now, so we put our minds to it and got it sorted out. The 510 obviously is a side lever, rather than the bolt action of the TDR, it comes with a shrouded barrel, moderator of magazines. Brocock was showing off the new Compato target. It features the variable power, compact proportions and multi-shot action that has won the original Compato a very loyal following, but is fitted with a regulator made by Dutch engineering supremo's humour. Why a regulator? Well, the regulator gives you a slightly better shot consistency and slightly more shots. And if you're doing target shooting with a rifle, that can make a big difference. Small gains, but big differences. So it's put inside the tube, you can't really see it, so we engrave the name on the side, but you do notice it if you're shooting at extreme ranges with these rifles, it's slightly flatter to do. It was hard to miss the BSA guns and gamo stand, because it had a giant blimp flying over the top of it. The team had a lot to shout about, including the launch of a tactical version of the Gamo Maxim Elite, the world's only magazine-fed 10-shot brake barrel. Many of our consumers have asked for a tactical composite design stock to also have available on the market, hence delivering this model. Uh, this is available in both calibres, 177 and 22, and retails at £279. A ready air supply is an essential for shooters of pre-charged air guns, and the shooting party had that covered with their new compact air ram compressor from Air Force One, which retails for just £699. We've got a lot of demand from air gunners for a budget compressor. There's compressors on the market, they're normally at least twice, twice or three times the price of this one. Uh, we think the market's right for budget compressor for filling air guns, buddy bottles and diving bottles. Uh, if you fill your air gun in just a couple of minutes, it'll fill a buddy bottle in, say, four minutes. It'll fill up a, a diving tank as well, or, or, or top of a diving tank, but obviously that takes longer. Uh, it's air-cooled and water-cooled. It'll do a 300 bar pressure gun, um, complete with a 12-month warranty, 
we got full parts support and spare parts available from the shooting party. And finally, it was very busy on the Scott Country Stand where the new Pulsar Forward F135 and F155 night vision add-ons were getting a lot of attention. Uh, it's a digital night vision device, so it clips on and off using as a benefit fitting uh, a mount, mounting system at the, on, on your scope. Um, obviously, you can use it on different sizes of scopes, from 42 mm right through to 56 mm uh, diameter. Um, it has it, basically there's no need for a panel axle adjustable because it's front mounted. Um, you have a B pack battery pack, so it'll give you six hours, six, six to eight hours runtime. Um, it's also Wi-Fi compatible, so you can actually stream um, the, the, the uh, you can stream the, what you're actually seeing through the scope through to a, a mobile device, a tablet or a phone. Um, it's got fairly basic functions. You've got your brightness contrast control in the menu, so it's very easy to operate. And you've also got a 940 nanometer covert infrared illuminator that's attached to the side. Uh, so there's no glow, so there's no, there's no visible glow from the illuminator at all. That was the Egg and Show News. Air gun bundle kits seem to be getting more and more popular of late. They offer great value for money and this is a fantastic example of just that. It's the Cometa Orion GoldenEye kit and apart from a decent multi-shot PCP you also get a scope and mounts, bipod, silencer, hard case and even a tin of pellets. The whole package has a retail price of £549.95. The gun looks a lot like the Orion SPR which I reviewed last year, although there are some very obvious differences to its styling. The gold finish on some of the metalwork is a real standout feature, though it may not appeal to everybody's taste. One new feature that I really do like is the dark stain that's been applied to the ambidextrous beach stock. The stock has some nice sharp checkering on either side of the pistol grip. There's none on the long forend, but there is a groove running along the length of the top edge. I think that really adds to the looks of the gun and it also helps to improve hold with your leading hand. The adjustable cheek piece is a really nice touch. Slacken off the locking bolts with the supplied tool and you can slide it up and down to achieve perfect alignment between your eye and the scope before locking it back in place. The stock is also fitted with two quick release studs which are really handy either for fitting a sling or for attaching the supplied adjustable bipod. Measuring 103 centimetres with the silencer fitted, the GoldenEye is an adult sized air gun, although it doesn't feel too long. It's also relatively light for its size, tipping the scales at under four kilos with the scope and mounts attached. On the whole, it's well proportioned and feels nicely balanced in the shoulder. The engineering is very tidy for an air gun at this price point, and there's no denying that the gold coloured action is eye catching. The same finish has also been applied to the trigger, the barrel band and the filler cap. The dovetail scope rails are interrupted by the magazine, but there should still be plenty of clamping space to accommodate most scopes. The supplied scope is a 3 to 9 by 40 model from the Richter Optics range. I've reviewed these scopes in the past and they really do offer great value for money. Apart from boasting variable magnification, this model also has a mill dot reticle and finger adjustable turrets. It even comes supplied with flip up lens covers. To fill the golden eye, simply pop the cap off the front of the cylinder and couple up the adapter on your hose to the inlet. From a 200 bar fill, the 22 caliber test gun returned more than 150 consistent shots at around 11 foot pounds. Keeping tabs on air reserves is simple because there's a clearly marked gauge sunken into the underside of the stock. The GoldenEye's multi-shot loading system works around a 13 shot magazine. With the clear plate facing away from you, you drop pellets in tail end first turning the plate clockwise to reveal another chamber and gradually tensioning the spring. When it's full, you return the plate to its original position and it's ready to go.
The clear plate at the rear of the magazine enables you to keep an eye on how many pellets you have left as you work your way through the clip. The magazine is cycled by a rear bolt system which also cocks the gun and probes the pellet into the breech. You need to be quite positive with it but the mechanism works as it should whether you want it for quick follow-up shots in the field or for rapid fire plinking sessions. This air gun features a manual safety catch that's positioned just in front of the trigger. A bit too close to the trigger in my opinion. Nonetheless, it does its job. You push it back to make the gun safe and then nudge it forwards when you're ready to shoot. The trigger is a surprisingly good adjustable two-stage unit. The blade does have a very pronounced curve to it, but it still feels comfortable enough. From the box, the first stage is very short, but the second stage is clean and predictable with no obvious creep. So that's the main features of the Cometer Orion Golden Eye Kit. It even comes supplied with a tin of pellets, so I'm going to get myself set up on the range and see what I can do with them. Well, that's a pretty decent five shot group at 25 meters. There's hardly any wind today, so I'd say it's pretty indicative of what this gun's capable of. Looking at it, I reckon that group will probably fall within half an inch from center to center, so this gun's certainly accurate enough for hunting out to that range. Now, I put the bipod on for the test, and the stability offered by, by that no doubt helped a lot. Um, I can also vouch for the fact that that chunky moderator also does a decent job of hushing down the muzzle crack. I was impressed with the Cometer Orion SPR when I tested it, and I have to say that I'm even more impressed with the Golden Eye Kit. To get an accurate, solidly built, multi-shot PCP, plus that scope and mounts, bipod, ammo, silencer, and hard case for under 550 pounds, really is very, very good value for money. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time that you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.